Well, my guest today's childhood was filled with much pain, more than any child should have to bear by themselves. But after being told to suck it up at the age of 10, she went through years of pushing her anger deep down inside and thinking that everything was fine. Can you relate? Welcome back, Hello. Esther Fleece. Alan thank now. You. Thank you for having me. It's good to be back. Oh, it's an honor to have you back. To bring us back to that day when you're walking down the aisle of a courtroom to testify in your father's case. Yeah. And the judge says that to you. You know, a lot of us have difficult childhoods and we like to forget about them. We like to leave them in the past and that's right where I wanted my childhood. For many years I left it there. But um, I was, I was 10 years old walking down the aisle of a courtroom. Um, I was there to testify in a case. I didn't even know the details of the case. Mm. I knew that my mother and my father were on opposite sides of the aisle. And uh, my father and his lawyer took out my diary. And I was just a young girl and it was uh, read in front of the courtroom. It was a humiliating and violating experience and I was overcome with emotion like most 10 year old girls would be and I broke down crying and in a moment I really needed comfort. I really needed um, an attorney for myself really yeah. somebody to defend me. The judge looked at me and said you need to suck it up and uh, that's when I started faking fine and I lived that way for decades to come. Esther, what was your relationship with God at that moment? How, like, were you having conversations with God? How did you feel about your relationship yeah, with God? Yeah, I think a lot of us, um, we do have those conversations, even though we don't understand who yeah, God is yeah. or we might not have grown up in the church. Yeah. Um, but I felt really abandoned in that moment. And when somebody in authority told me to suck it up, I, I kind of thought that that's what God wanted of me as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's how many of us are when we're told something um, from somebody in authority, we take that as gospel truth or that's that must be what God says to us. But really God is the opposite kind of judge than the judge that I sat in front of that day. God never says to suck it up in scripture. He says, come to me when you're weary come to me when you're burdened and I'm going to bear that with you. And so it took me years to come to know the God who actually sits with me mm. when I cry instead of telling me to keep faking fine and sucking it up. You, your mom, you had a difficult relationship with your mom. She tried to admit you into a psych ward. Or I think she did admit yeah, you into a psych did. ward, mm -hmm. changed the locks on your home door, uh, your house door to the point where you had to survive by yourself. Yes. Your dad was out of the picture as well. Yeah, my mother ended up getting remarried and that stepfather left us just one year later. He had an affair. Yeah. And um, my biological mother, I, I, you know, God has helped me forgive her, mm -hmm. but I think she was so broken and she didn't know where to turn and she didn't know where to go with her grief mm -hmm. as well. And if we don't process our grief and if we don't process uh, the losses that we faced, we will take that out on other people. And unfortunately she did take that out of me. And so I was um, at 13, I was orphaned really. And if it weren't for families in my community and if it weren't for families inside of the church that said she can live with us, mm -hmm. um, I don't know where I would be and I don't know who I would be. We're gonna fast forward a, li a little, still trying to be an excellent student you know, you're, you're excelling in school, you have a great career, and then you're told by God to just give it all away. Mm -hmm. But I love this point, in speaking to a therapist, they challenged you to write down your laments. Yes. Explain first of all what laments are and what that process was yeah. like. Well, you know, there is a stigma with going to see a counselor and I get that because I was one of those people that judged people for going mm. to counseling. But truly, um, when I sat with somebody who was patient to listen to my pain and didn't just push it aside, there was great healing that I found mm. in counseling. And my counselor said, you know, you have never lamented. And I didn't even know what the word yeah. was. And so he was teaching me that a lament is a cry of your heart. It's the pain that's inside. You need to let it out. You don't have to suck it up anymore. Mm -hmm. And so sure enough, I did. And when I let those cries come out and they sounded like, God, why was I abandoned? Why didn't I have a father that loved me? Why did my mother leave me? All these cries, they kept coming and coming. I found that God met me in that point of distress, mm -hmm. that God didn't tell me to just keep going. He said, just let me let me meet you in that moment of brokenness. And he did. And so lament was really the pathway to freedom. Mm. Lament was the pathway to forgiveness. If we haven't lamented, we're not gonna be able to forgive. Yeah. That is just a key component to our forgiveness and to living as healthy, emotionally healthy individuals. So a lament is really what led me to the faith. Mm. Esther, as you were going through, I, I mean, an unimaginable childhood and then faced with, okay, let's, let's actually look at all the things that you've gone through as you've 
you've pushed this all down. What was the most challenging part of having to relive all of this? Mm. You know, I think um, as an adult facing the abandonment and the, the pains of my past, was actually more difficult than going through it when I was a child. I think when I was a kid, there was just this grace that God protected me and gave me strength to go through it. But that same grace, you know, 20 years later said, now it's time to deal with it. So for the first time I had to feel emotions that I tried my entire life to forget really. So I would say that the pathway to healing and the pathway to forgiveness was actually more difficult than I ever thought it was going to be. I love this quote, uh, page 97 of your book, lamenting is a painful process, but it is is even more painful to live a life pretending strength of keeping God's keeping God an arm's length away because you're shutting down the conversation with a fine. Yes, you know, we've all met those people that you can't go deep with. You know, yeah. you just feel like they're nice, but they're kind of surfacey. I just can't get to, I can't get to know them. And I think it's because they don't let themselves know themselves. I mean, they're afraid to go deep, but they don't want to go to some hard places. And so it does take work. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes community around you. But I will say it's worth it. It's worth pressing through that pain to get to become a person of substance. And when we are patient with ourselves in pain, we grow to becoming patient with others in pain. Mm. And that's, that's what I think I wanna to say to the viewers is your pain is, is to help somebody else as well. God doesn't want you to stay stuck in your pain and he's gonna use that pain to help encourage or give strength to somebody else. You have some great points in the book. Uh, one, can we still be joyful in the midst of lament? Yeah. You know, I think Christians get this reputation of being joyful always. Yes. And some of that is from joyful the Bible. Joyful Lord is my strength, right? Esther. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and really, you look at the book of Philippians, and Paul wrote this book to the church, and I think over 16 times he says, be joyful and, and give thanks. It's really optimistic and encouraging. And so we read those verses and we think, oh, we're supposed to be happy Christians. Yeah. But we forget that Paul wrote that in jail. Yeah. I mean, in jail, when he was afflicted and he was wrongly accused and he went through beatings and persecution and... And he faced more than most of us will ever face. He said, I have learned to be content because the contentment cannot come from our circumstances. The contentment has to come from a relationship with Christ. And so, yes, um, God does want us to be happy and joyful, but God also very, very much wants to hear a lament and he wants us to go to him in whatever season we're in. We don't have to hide, whether that's joyful or suffering. Yeah. Um, resting in the fact that God hasn't forgotten me. Mm. That's huge. Yes, I think that that is where um, we as a community and as people can do a better job sitting with people in pain. Mm -hmm. I was never good at this. When I saw people hurting, I thought like, oh, well, let's just, you know, let's go shopping. Or yeah, like yeah. We, we try to distract. mask, yeah, distract. Yeah, yeah. And I just think that one of the most kind things to do with somebody in pain is to sit with them and to listen to them and just to give them hope that that's not the end of their story. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a pastor in the U.S. His name's uh, Louis Giglio. I mm -hmm. think he's been on your show yeah. before. And when I was in a difficult season, he said, you know, if God, if, if it is not good yet, then God is not done. Mm, and say I, that again. If it is not good yet, yeah. then God is not that's done. Good. That's and I good. needed that. You know, sometimes we need that encouragement that, um, that the difficulty is not the end of our story, and it's not. It is good now. <laughs> you have a beautiful family. You got Thank married. You. you have a lovely little boy. What's your son's name? His name is Asa. Asa. Yes, How he's probably this... watching. Hi, Asa. Hi, Asa. <laughs> How does this feel to have this new chapter in life that yeah. God's taking you through? I'm so grateful. I think that um, I, I one of the things I am going to be writing again, mm. um, and I look forward to that, but one of the things I'm writing about is um, that God has good things for us and new things for us on this side of the lament that we would miss out if we skipped it. And so God has brought so much healing to my story, but it hasn't come through the circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's come through um, watching God help me persevere. And so it's it really the joy of my life to be a wife and a mom. It's new responsibilities and new joys. But even as my husband and I were on our honeymoon, we found out um, that my biological father, who I wrote a lot about, passed away. Mm -hmm. So even in the highest of highs, we had to deal with loss. And I think that's life, is we have ups and we have downs. And 
beyond all of that, we have a God who wants to stay steady for us in the midst of whatever comes our way. Oh, thank you so much, Esther, for just being honest and candid yeah. about your, your journey. Thank you, Maggie. Again, the book is No More Faking Fine. And, you know, if you uh, are going through something similar, maybe you're going through a struggle right now, maybe you feel like you haven't heard God, maybe you're, you're calling out to him and you feel like it's just brass, you're just, your cries are just hitting a brass uh, ceiling, know that he is there, that he does hear you, that he does love you. Call our prayer lines 1-866-273-4444 or you can email prayer at crossroads.ca.